So we're going to measure the orientation of a plane uh, here, as it happens in Ballycotton uh, Harbour. Uh, the first thing you do uh, when you measure the orientation of any structure is that you make sure you know what you're measuring. Clearly, we've got alternating bands of red siltstones, green sandstones, so the bedding fabric we can clearly see here. Now, if I walk up to this surface here, this surface here is a bedding plane, a bedding surface. It's very clear also, just in passing, that we've got a series of fractures, joint fractures, cross-cutting that bedding surface. And in addition, we've got a cleavage, a tectonic cleavage fabric coming through like that, giving us a bedding cleavage intersection lineation. Let's not worry about that. I just want to measure the orientation of this plane here in front of us. So when we measure the orientation of a plane, we have three elements, strike, dip, and dip direction. It's quite nice here in that if you look at this pool of water, uh, the definition of a strike line is a horizontal line on the surface. And this water line here gives us a very nice reference uh, for a horizontal line. So let's extend that line and imagine that there we have it there. We have a line coming across like that. That's our strike line. 90 degrees to it, we've got our line of dip. And obviously the beds are dipping in that direction. So we set up the compass uh, chronometer, so the chronometer, the chronometer in its correct orientation, east, set it east-west, and we hold the compass chronometer when we're using the chronometer vertically like that. So you'll notice there's a needle, a little black diamond-shaped needle. That's going to measure off the inclination of the base of the compass. That's what we're going to use to measure the amount of dip. So we return this to the surface and we move it around. Imagine the line of dip being a, uh, a line down which water would flow if it was flowing on this surface. So we just move it around and, and we just give it a few little tips like that and we can read off directly the inclination of the base of the compass which is in this case is the line of dip. And this is a reading here of approximately 40, uh, 45 degrees. Okay, so that is the dip of our uh, bedding surface. There's our line of dip, 90 degrees is our line of strike, a horizontal line on the surface. We take the compass, now we're holding it flat because we're using it as a compass, and we put the long axis of the compass along the line of strike, that horizontal line on the bedding uh, surface. We rotate, I'm going to do this with two hands, we're going to rotate the face of the compass such that the red needle and the red arrow are aligned, and there we have the orientation of our strike. We've got two readings. One is approximately 300, the other is 120. Okay? It doesn't matter which one you use. All right? So you can use the higher or the lower value in the case of uh, strike readings. We're nearly there. We've got our dip reading, we've got our strike reading. A dip reading of approximately 45 degrees, a strike reading of, we'll take the lower value of 120. So it's 120, 45, and the last component is a dip direction. And that's very easily done. We simply take the compass, align the red needle and red arrow as before. That's north, south, east behind me, west. So clearly these beds are dipping out in this direction, they're dipping out to the northeast. That's the final component of our reading. So again, to recap, our strike of 120, 120 space, dip of 45 degrees, just 45 space northeast. That's the job done.